a woman in a hot air balloon realizes she is lost. She reduces her altitude and looks down on the field below. She sees a man and asks for help. Excuse me, can you tell me where I am? He's like, yeah, you're about 30 feet above this field in a hot air balloon. You must be an engineer. Yes, I am. How do you know? Well, everything you said is technically accurate, but of no use to anyone. <laughs> you must be a manager. Yes, I am. How do you know? Well, you don't know where you are or where you were going. You were lost before we met, and you're still lost now. But somehow, this is all my fault. <laughs> Those of you who can relate to the woman in your hot air balloon, raise your hand. Those here who can relate to the man on the field, raise your hand. And I want you to turn to the person beside you and give them a high five. Even though we may not always be on the same side, we're all in this together. I'm Rick Meany. I'm VP of Engineering at Abstract. I'm an engineer. I'm a mom of six-year-old twin boys, currently going through a very stressful kitchen remodel. And I'm partner to my better half, Shivan, who's also an engineering leader and in the audience. And because I know he loves spotlights so much. Hi, Shravan. <laughs> Today, I would love to walk you through my journey and five tried and tested lessons that helped me become a badass engineering leader. This woman here, wearing pants and holding a badminton racket, is my amama, my maternal grandmother. She was fierce as hell. Remember her? Because we're going to go back now. That was 90 years ago. Now let's go back about 17 years ago. The night I was leaving India to move to the United States. The first time I would ever get on a plane. My mother was hysterical. She was threatening to tear my airplane ticket. And my dad was like, hold on, that costs us a lot of money. Let's talk through this. <laughs> Amidst all this chaos, I remember sitting on my parents' couch trembling, questioning my decision, questioning why I was going to step on that plane, move away from everything and everyone I hold dear. My amama walks over to me and she says, what are you afraid of? Huh? I drove a car in the 30s in India when it was illegal for women to do that. I took all those risks so you would have better opportunities. You need to get on that plane, and you need to step into the unknown. I was terrified. That's me on most days. But I mustered the courage, and I stepped onto that plane and into the unknown. And it is that that has prepared me for all the unknowns that came my way on my path to leadership. It has helped me prepare for things when they're new and scary, when other engineers were too afraid to take risks or make hard decisions, I was able to. Leadership is about making choices when the waters are murky. And it's about modeling how you as leaders make those tough choices so your team has the courage to do the same. Am I fearless? No. But have I let fear stop me? Hell no. Courage isn't about lacking fear. Fear is what makes courage, well, courageous, isn't it? It's about saying, yes, you can. Yes, I can, when you're in uncharted territory. That is what makes courage so remarkable. Lesson number two. Two, two months ago, a couple months into my new role at Abstract, I had a ridiculously busy week. You all know how startups go. It was insane. 
was really busy in a meeting. It was 8.30 in the morning, and I got this phone call from my partner. It's like, hey, I just dropped the kids off at school, and I heard you might be the parent volunteer who was in charge of bringing coffee for all the teachers, and it's Teacher's Appreciation Day. I froze. For the first time since my boys started kindergarten, I felt like I dropped the ball. I started to panic. And he was like, hold on, don't panic. I'm going to turn the car around. I'm going to go get them coffee. He even called the school to tell them coffee would be late and apologized on my behalf. He is my greatest squad partner. We share lessons we learn in our careers, in our friendships, and as parents. And that's what makes our mutual success possible. As leaders, it is your job to create a team of people that can have each other's back, that can be each other's squad, and allow each other the time and the space to fail and to learn and to grow. Creative leaders take risks but they don't go about it alone. I know you want to do everything right. And sometimes you're going to forget things. And sometimes you want to burst into tears. And that's OK. But when you are in that state and you find a person or a group of people, a troop of people, who can hold you and support you and bring you up, that is incredibly valuable. Find your people, hold them close. I'll give you a moment to read it. I love Dilbert. If you're going to make it in any industry, and especially in tech, you need to know the difference between feedback that's helped to keep you in your place, which is criticism, and feedback that's meant to help you grow, candor. We see a lot of trolling online these days. And sadly, thanks to Slack, it permeates into our engineering cultures as well. And when you start creating groundbreaking work, a lot of people are going to criticize you. Because it can remind people of times they didn't fully settle in or were not able to express themselves. And when you add gender and racial dynamics to it, it gets really challenging and messy. This is the reality, and it sucks. But if you absorb that negativity, you will lose your power, you will lose your motivation, and you will lose your spark. I have thrived by differentiating the critics who matter and the impact they have on me and the decisions I make. It's the don't feed the trolls mantra that has really helped me focus on the work I am doing. It doesn't mean I don't want your feedback. I do. I actually expect feedback, but feedback that's rooted in genuine care and honesty, as we call it, radical candor. So you can ask me, like, how do you get to radical candor, Rukmi? What's the process? It's a buzzword. Like, what's involved there? So a couple things I do, tips. So when I join a new team, the number one thing I focus on is providing clarity. What is your job description? What's your role? What are the responsibilities? What's the engineering career ladder? So then I can use that to do performance reviews and have feedback conversations and one-on-ones. My CEO, Josh, says, clarity is kindness. Think about that. I couldn't agree more. It is. It is being kind. Once you have clarity, you can start the really difficult process of building trust. It doesn't happen overnight. What is trust? Trust is showing up when you said you would over and over again and saying what you said you would do over and over again. I practice this by calling my people. I schedule one-on-ones with all the engineers in my organization. My team's currently at 45. I don't wait for them to schedule it. I do it. I show up over and over again. That is how I build trust. I call my people. I make sure they're engaged, make sure they're happy, and make sure they're doing the best work of their life at abstract. There's an ocean of difference between criticism and candor. 
and helping you identify the difference is going to help you thrive. I'm big on gifts, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> Early on in my career, I was the only woman on engineering teams several times. And as I got into leadership, that problem got worse. In my early days, I did struggle with imposter syndrome. I felt like as the only woman on the team, I had to be the caretaker of the team. You know, I used to volunteer to organize the team events and make sure everybody had lunch and off-sites. And one day it just occurred to me, wait a minute, I like to entertain, don't take me wrong. But in my personal life, in my personal time, this is not my job description. As a woman, the realization that I don't owe anything anyone is hugely powerful because it shifts us from being seen as a caretaker of the team to an equal member of the team. It helps us focus on our own growth and excel in a way we should. This doesn't mean I'm perfect. Far from it. But for me, failure is a completely acceptable intermediate state. I allow myself room to fail and to learn and to grow and to thrive. You need to step into this mindset. And remember, you don't owe anyone anything. Know who you are. Take pride in it, mistakes and all. Live your life full out. Eight, that's how old I was when I was stuck in a needlepoint class in my convent in India. I hated it. And honestly, I sucked at it. I remember a teacher walking in and announcing that they had opened up a new computer lab and they would teach kids logo. I jumped out of my seat at the opportunity of swapping needlepoint out for something cool and new and exciting. I raised my hand, and I was the only girl in the class of 60 who wanted to swap needlepoint out for computer science. And over the years, I've spent so many hours teaching myself how to code in computer labs and libraries and student unions. And I realized the harder I was willing to work, the more opportunities opened up for me. And now that I am here as an engineering leader, I get to make the call to run a data-driven organization. Although we all have our own biases, data does not. If we are transparent and use data responsibly, it can help us combat gender and race discrimination. It can hold us accountable for being fair. I use data to reward and measure my team's performance. I use data in my recruitment process. I make sure that my scorecards are crystal clear. I make sure everybody understands the skills they are checking for, these detailed questions, so there's no bias in my recruitment process. I use data to set up performance reviews and your career growth and plans. My hope is that all of you as leaders here today are going to use data responsibly to make dreams like mine possible for future engineers. A few weeks ago, I was reading this children's book. It was called The Most Magnificent Thing. And it's about this little girl who's picking spare parts up as she's walking on the street. And you're wondering, what is she building? And you realize she fails and she tries, and in the end, she builds this little scooter, and it has a sidecar for her disabled dog. We close the book, and my boys look at me and say, Mommy, are all girls engineers? <sighs> I said, no, and that's a great question for another day. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that these boys of mine get to see me, a woman, a mother, as an archetype for what engineering leaders look like. 
And as I look at this room full of leaders, standing your ground, asking for more, I know I'm not the only one. Dream big. It's going to be hard, but it'll be absolutely worth it. I want to give a big thanks to Plato, who are on a mission to help us engineering and product leaders build better teams and us becoming better managers and leaders. I know we are at the end of our conference day, but it doesn't have to be the end of our connection. That is what Plato is here for, right? To connect and elevate all of us. The road may be challenging, but you are not alone. Find your courage, find your people, let criticism go, be yourself and go for it. It will be hard, but I know you've got this. Thank you.